art nerds. Today I'm going to show you how to make a small handful of really easy, affordable watercolor gifts made from your existing watercolor collection. We have here a curated watercolor palette filled with favorites. We have mini travel watercolor sets. We have dot card dot card ornaments and we have monthly challenges. So if you wanna find out how these are made, you're just gonna to have to keep watching. So I have already started building my watercolor palettes. At the top is Heidi's, at the bottom is Kabocha's. And while I'm going to be filling them with similar colors, they're not going to be filled with the same colors since they both have different palettes. This is a really great way to not only share your collection with another watercolor hoarder, another fan of watercolors, but to give a gift that really has a lot of value, but doesn't have a lot of additional cost. So as you guys who buy individual tubes of watercolors know, depending on what brand you're buying, they can run from 10 to $15. And maybe you really fell in love with the color, you really wanna share it with someone. So this is a great way, filling up half pans, filling up whole pans, this is a great way to share your collection with people who live far away from you without breaking the bank, without sending them tubes as well. And I know this is not new news to anyone, but if you've amassed a palette of curated colors, that in and of itself can be a present. So we're gonna take a look at the materials you need to complete this project. It really doesn't take a lot. I have here two homemade watercolor palettes in palettes or colors that I thought might suit the friends that I'm gifting these to. These come with half pans or whole pans. I opted for the half pan option. And what I like about these is these come with the magnet already attached to the back. So you're also going to need a permanent marker and you might want a marker that can mark on the surface. I'm actually gonna use a chrome marker a little bit later on when I am closer to completion. So what you wanna do if you're gifting a palette to someone is you wanna provide useful information in case they love that palette. So we have here a Holbein W315 Permanent Violet. So I'm gonna write H W C on the half pan and then I'm going to write W315 and I've already got one right here. So I'll save this for W375, which is the next color. And you wanna keep track of the order you are doing your colors in and I'm keeping them organized by color family. And then once I have filled all of these and let them cure, I'm going to cut pieces of watercolor paper out and attach them to the inside lid. And when I'm filling half pans, I just squeegee my paint off onto the side and I'm gonna give it a few taps just so it kind of settles and push it into place. And I'm gonna work that, work my way through all of the paints that I've selected. And I'll probably go back and select some more, but I'm gonna put this right here next to the HWC Brilliant Pink. Now, one of these sets came with a foam liner. The other one did not. I like the foam liners. I think they protect the paint. So I'm gonna have to hand cut another foam liner so that both sets have foam liners in them. So the paints I'm going to include in this palette are a lot of Holbein paints. I'm also going to include some of my favorite core colors since both of these friends enjoy core watercolors. I'm going to include some Daniel Smith watercolors in Heidi's palette. I'm going to include some Kusakabe um, sort of intense, almost neon colors in both palettes. I've also got some Magello Mission Gold colors that are gonna go. Um, not every color is gonna go in each palette because again, you know, these friends are also watercolor hoarders. They're also watercolor nerds. They've got collections as well. So I'm trying to keep in mind what their favorites are and kind of avoid including those so we don't get any duplicates. And I'm trying to do this really early on because these are gonna take about a week to dry out. And then I may need to add some gum Arabic to rebind them since they are tube watercolors. 
You can also send little dot cards to friends as a Christmas present or as a stocking stuffer. And we're gonna cover more of that later on in the video. All right, so I have this half pan of Turner Quinn Sienna. I filled this a while back to send to my friend Kabocha. This does not have a magnetic bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the magnetic bottom off of one of these homemade. Very simple, it's just magnetic tape. And I'm just going to apply this to the half pan I already filled. Because sometimes when I buy paints, if I purchase a color I think one of my friends will like, I'll go ahead and fill a half pan for them. And then I forget to send them. So for me, that's pretty handy. I can just pop that in there and I just need to remember that that is Turner Quinn Gold down there. So I have here some tubes of the discontinued Holbein Iridori line. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure I mark on the sides that these are Iridori. Unfortunately, they won't be able to get them anymore. Then I'm gonna write HWC on the side and then I'm gonna write the color number as well. And when you can write the color number, that's a really handy way that someone could cross reference because you can write the full color name when you make the chart or you could even make like a color provenance list including the name of the color, the brand of the color, where you purchased it and what pigments are in it. If you're really the organizational type, you guys know I am not, but I will write the name of the color as well as the color number so people can cross-reference it. And I'll probably mark that it's discontinued and that way they don't fall in love with something that they just can never have again. But this is also a really great way if you've got some like certain brands will discontinue or change the formulation of certain colors like Daniel Smith changed the Quinn Gold last year. And I hear the old tubes are going for like $50 a pop, which I gotta say, y'all are crazy if you're willing to spend 50 bucks a pop. Like send me that 50 bucks if you can spend 50 bucks a pop on a tube of Queen Gold. But, and I'll find a Queen Gold that's just like it for you. But this is a great way to sort of share a collection that might have some rare watercolors in it without having to track down tubes of those colors or pay an arm and a leg for those colors or you just can't share those colors anymore. Ah. So I have three, at least three tubes of Iridori and you also want to be careful because now I have wet paint on both my hands and a cat on my lap and I guess I'm just going to die like this. So I think I'm about finished with Holbein watercolors. I'm going to leave these last two pans blank and just move on to the next row. That's gonna make it a little bit easier to parse which colors are which. Now for both friends, I'm, this is where it's really gonna to start to diverge. I'm gonna to start to include different colors for different people because um, I know Heidi, for example, has a lot of core watercolors and Kabocha is the one who actually introduced me to Daniel Smith. I think the only thing that I'm bringing new to the table will be the Magello. And I actually wanna go dig up my larger Magello set so I can include some colors from that. But you guys see, I have everything kind of laid out in order. I can take a photo of it. I can write this information down, but it's really important to capture that information now while it's handy, rather than trying to either remember what things are or pulling pans out of order to to dig up the information. All right, here are the two filled palettes. I have everything listed out for what's in each individual palette. Um, Heidi's has 40 different colors, Sam's has 38, but I'm sending Sam some other presents so I don't feel too bad about that. Now, you don't have to fill an entire 40 pans with paint. You can go really, really simple and you can make a super teeny tiny pocket set now, I have a video where I dismantled this set on camera for you guys and refilled it. And actually, I actually have a, a couple different videos where I do this, but this is just a tiny little $2 set I picked up at Plaza. I pried out the little cheap garbagey paints out and I filled it with Magello paints that I thought would make for a good 
sort of travel mixing set. So this is something that's really cute, really tiny, really compact. You could put it on a keychain, and it makes a really nice little stocking stuffer or a nice inexpensive gift. So I'm going to allow these to dry open for a few days, and then I'm going to create kind of a master chart where all the colors are listed so my friends can actually find what they're looking for. And if they happen to like a color, they know what they're taking out and putting in their other palettes. So it's been several days and these have had a chance to dry. So what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna make color maps for both of these. Now what you're gonna need to make color maps is a sheet of watercolor paper that we're going to cut down to size. We're gonna attach it to the top and then we're gonna do a swatch for each of the colors on that piece of watercolor paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the foam that they included with one of these palettes. So that should about give us the right size for the lid. And I'm gonna do that twice. And I'm using inexpensive cellulose paper, partially because it is typically thinner than cotton rag paper. But also it's a little more affordable and we don't have to use cotton rag paper to make a map. And your trace doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's kind of hard to get it perfect because the foam wants to go in. And then I'm going to cut this out. For this next part, you're gonna need a cup of water. You're gonna need some tape, a paintbrush, and a paper towel. And we're basically just going to swatch our paint onto the paint mat. And then once that's dry, we're gonna tape it to the inside lid. And we need to keep in mind that we need room for eight across and five down. So try to keep it roughly the same size as the pans or half pans that you're doing. Okay, so that's one card down. I need to let it dry and then I'm gonna do kind of a shorthand labeling of the paints inside. What I also did is I went ahead and printed off an info sheet of all the colors that are going to be inside this palette to include with that. So now I'm on to the other palette. And this part is pretty easy, just kind of tedious. Next, I need to label these, and I'm gonna do them with a bit of a shorthand because I showed you guys earlier, I have a bit of a cheat sheet for them. And then we need to let these dry further because some of them are still pretty malleable.
Alright guys, so I've got these labeled. I actually found a bright violet which belongs in this set here but was in this set here. Unfortunately, I just don't have anything that I really can kind of take out of this set to move over here. There isn't anything. Maybe I can scratch out Bronze Eye Genuine and switch it over. But other than that, there's nowhere to put it in and there's not necessarily any color that I want to swap out. So, but other than that, they are finished. Um, the next step will be to tape the maps to the inside covers, but I'm gonna do that after I've switched out the color and corrected it. To do that, we're just gonna take some of our tape. You can use double stick tape, that would be a little bit handier. Roll it over itself, and then we're gonna put it in each of the four corners of the map on the back side. Once we have all four corners down or taped, we can turn it over and then press it down into the top of our watercolor container. If you were lazy, like I was in cutting, you may find one of the corners doesn't want to quite stick. So you may have to go back in and trim it a little bit. All right, so those are our color maps. I am going to put the felt, not the felt, the foam back in. And you can see I cut one from a couple of pieces of foam I had laying around to go into this one. These need to fully dry out some more. So I'm gonna have to set these aside for a while. So these have had several more days to dry. I think, yeah, they're, uh, some of them are a little squishy, but they should be good to mail. So all that's really left, we've got everything nicely labeled. We have the foam. All that's really left is to clean off this little bit of paint and package these off and mail them out. So if you would like to personalize these, I recommend you use a Molotov uh, metallic marker, which I think I have handy. And it seems I was wrong. I do not have one handy, but anyway, those are really nice metallic markers. You can use those to label the person's name. Maybe you would put Kabocha's custom set, something like that across the front. And there you have a fairly easy, fairly time consuming, but also very unique watercolor gift to send to a friend who's also interested in watercolor. So our next little watercolor present is perfect if you have a lot of people to buy for, if you're doing like a gift exchange or sort of something where you have to give everyone in a group something. So I am going to make little dot sample cards of some of my favorite watercolors to send out to my art nerds this year. And you're gonna need a hole punch. You're gonna need some fairly sturdy paper. So I have here some canvas artist trading cards. And I also have some watercolor paper, but I'm gonna really try to do it on the canvas trading card since these are a little less absorbative and um, hopefully they can reactivate more of the paint. I also have card sleeves to protect our little dot cards. And then I have some cute seasonal ribbon and you're also going to want a selection of paints as well as a hole punch. So what we're going to do is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Perfect, 12 colors. So I wanna get six on each line. And this isn't a particular selection. It's just sort of a selection of my favorite colors. So it's not, it's a curated palette only in that it's a palette of colors that I happen to really like. So I'm removing some of the canvas. And the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna stamp or punch a hole at the top of all of them. And I'm also going to want to punch a hole in the sleeves. And I think it'll be easier for me if I do this all at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit my canvas into my sleeve and then punch them at the same time. And this can also be a really great sort of mini gift if, you know, 
you are, you have children who are interested in watercolors, nieces and nephews who are interested in watercolors. You could use this as the gift tag where on one side you write to and from and then the other side you have your watercolor dots. So this is kind of a really cute way that you can kind of make watercolor part of your gift giving this year while not going out and spending a lot of money, kind of reusing things you already have. So we have five. I'm gonna go punch a hole in all five of these. When I punched my holes, I wanted to make sure they weren't too close to the top, that they went through both and that they're centered in the middle so they can hang properly. So we are now going to remove and set aside our little plastic bags. And those are just card sleeves, but you could use little zipper bags too, kind of whatever you have on hand. Uh, what might be really pretty is little glassine or wax paper bags. And this could be really great for like a group of crafters or a group of scrapbookers who are doing an exchange so that everybody gets a cute little something. Maybe everybody picks their favorite color and brings it in. All right. So I'm going to do. Uh, someone gets a generous dot. And you could even write what colors you're including on the other side or you can do that on a piece of card, do it on a piece of scrapbook paper. Set this aside. And we wanna make sure we keep the order we've applied our dots in so that we can make a little map, a little key for later. And I'm gonna keep them kind of organized by what brand they are. And you see green might be a little difficult for this. You also kind of wanna avoid doing this with colors that don't harden properly. So like engrams might not be the best for this. I don't know if we'll be able to get all 12 on here after all. And then we have some Prima Tech colors. So it looks like I can get four on a row, but I think I can do three rows. And if you have a Cricut, you could cut these out into really, really cute shapes. I have a friend who has a Cricut and she does these gorgeous doily patterns. So a dot card on the doily pattern would be just so cute. So it could also be like a nice little giveaway for like a small locally owned store to have for their customers, maybe with like their recommended palette, you know? I mean, these sorts of little gifts, woof, someone's gonna get a lot of appetite green. Um, these sort of small gifts, they aren't particularly expensive. It's a good way to share the materials you have with other people and to be able to do that with a larger group maybe, which we wouldn't necessarily be able to do if we were sending everybody half pants. Okay. Next, I'm gonna do core French ultramarine blue. Now I can only imagine how crazy this would be if I was doing like 20 of these. I would definitely be going a little nuts. And maybe this is something you could do in batches or you could, if you're a store for example, or like a group of people, you could take turns doing them or um, everybody does a certain number, that sort of thing. Now, we just have four left. And like I mentioned earlier, these are just some of my favorite colors from this year. So these are a lot of things I've kind of recently been introduced to or recently had the pleasure of using. Some tubes are a little bit easier to use than others. This is about the size of dot. I was kind of hoping to give everyone anyway.
could almost get another row of dots on if you wanted. Michaels also sells like pre-cut tags. You can get pre-cut tags at Dollar Tree. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set these somewhere safe for them to dry out. The next thing you wanna do is you want to take note of what order your rows are in so that the recipient can figure out what paints were used and if they like it, they can get some more. So I'm kind of just visually recreating the layout in order that I use for my little dot cards and I'm gonna write that down and that way I can include that when I package it all together. Now I have these small sort of pastel green post-it notes. They're the kind that are adhesive all along the back. And I thought these would be really neat to attach to the cards once they're finished, rather than attempting to write onto the cards. Now let's see how small I can write and if I can do that five times fast. Actually, I don't think that one's gonna work. Just can't quite write small enough. Let's try that again. So we have DS, 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 DS for Daniel Smith. And it's so tiny, y'all can't even see what I'm doing. Teensy tiny, but it's all there. Now I have to do this five times fast. What I'm gonna do, or four more times, what I'm gonna do is for now, because the originals are drawing, I'm just gonna attach it to the little bags. And that way they're all together. So now it's time to assemble our tiny, cute little watercolor favors or ornaments. We're going to take the color informational key that we've created. And unfortunately, it doesn't quite line up. Look, it should go like this. Oh, that would make sense. But when we put it on the back, not so much. Hopefully, hopefully those who receive this though, will figure it out. You can always write it backwards if you want it to be one-to-one, -one. but if they remove it and they have it down in front of them, then it will actually be one-to-one. -one. So I'm going to... Just place the sticky notes on the back of each. All right, so next I'm going to slip them into the little protective sleeves we've prepared. Make sure the holes align. And now we're gonna use some ribbon and you can either make it as a gift tag or as an ornament. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a loop, make a knot at the end of my loop, thread it through, and then bring this through. And you really want this on the back side, so we're gonna do that again. Ooh, really? Come on. Huh. I can't win. Okay, that's fine. We'll trim that short. You can seal that with nail polish if you like. And then if you want something a little bit prettier, you can take some decorative ribbon. I have some organza ribbon right here. Well, maybe not so much. But what we can also do is we can tie a little knot, then tie a little bow, trim said little bow, 
and then glue said little bow. But you don't want to glue it onto this. You want to glue it above because otherwise you won't be able to get your bag open. Or I guess you can glue it right here and then you can still slip it out. Or you could glue it right here or you could put it right here. It's really up to you. We'll do another with an organza ribbon. So if you're hanging them as ornaments, teeny tiny tags will work. But if you want them as gift tags, you're gonna need a fairly large loop. Because it needs to, the tag needs to be able to go through the loop itself. Same procedure. Now you have a tag that's large enough that it should be able to go on a bag. So we have five little tags finished. If you want to make them a little bit cuter, you can use stickers or you can use a little bit of washi tape. And actually should measure that, right? And I'm just gonna put it along the bottom because that's where we have our free space. All right, and we're all done. These are ready to be attached to a gift bag, hung on a tree, or exchanged at a very tiny gift exchange. So a slightly nicer variation on this is to take a pre-existing mini paint set, pry out all the terrible, garbagey mini paints, and then fill them with the paints of your choice. This mini paint set was filled with Magello paints, carefully selected as a mixing set. And I actually have a video tutorial of how you can do that here on this channel. These are absolutely adorable. They would make perfect pocket sets. You can attach a keychain or a key ring to them, or you could even hang them as little ornaments on your tree. They're fairly inexpensive to make, the only problem is prying out those tiny little cakes takes a lot of time. So that's something you're gonna wanna plan and prep ahead of time, or maybe get someone else to help you. But seriously, how cute are these? For our last inexpensive watercolor gift, you're going to want a calendar page as well as 30 to 31 tubes of watercolor paint. What we're making is a color a day challenge. And this idea was stolen from my friend Kabocha who sent me such a calendar about a year ago and I never got to it. I am so sorry, my friend. It is still waiting for me to do it. So we have December, which is the month that Kabocha's character Aster was born. So I was thinking about doing pinks, purples, and greens for Aster. And then we have June, which is my friend Heidi's birth month. And I was thinking about doing really loud, bright colors because my friend Heidi is not afraid of color. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can either do the dots directly onto this paper. And ideally you would print this on cardstock or something heavier. It's just regular printer stock. So I'm gonna need to attach it to something a little bit heavier. Or you can do your dots on watercolor chips and then either glue or tape your watercolor chips to your calendar pages. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm selecting my colors and I'm not necessarily selecting them for a specific date. I'm just trying to make sure I have a color select selection that works well for this particular character. And I apologize because some of the colors that are being sent were du duplicated in half pans that I showed you guys. As with either selection, you're gonna be picking colors you think either suit the person you're sending into or suit the character, etc. So if you were to send both, you might end up with duplicates if you don't have a ginormous watercolor collection. No! What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put these on watercolor paper, label them and then cut them out. And then I'm gonna 
figure out what order I want to sort them into and affix them to this little calendar. And maybe I should have just counted out 31 tubes. Wouldn't that be easier? Wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't that be the intelligent thing to do? Do we always do the intelligent thing? No. I frequently don't do the intelligent thing after all. Okay, so I also have some of the sets I reviewed this year. So I will augment with those. I think we did it. I think we got it. All right. So my next trick is I'm going to dump them all. I'm going to make some space. And I have here a big old pad of Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. So this is cellulose watercolor paper. It's not an expensive watercolor paper. It's fairly cheap. And I am going to have this over here as reference. These over here to draw from. And I'm just going to start making dots. take a moment to point out that all of this is unacceptable. I cannot send that. That is just honey. Well, I mean, it's Sennelier, so it's honey is their binder, but it might be also some gum arabic. And to be honest, I'm not going to taste it to tell y'all. So we'll just have to believe that it's honey, but I can't send that. And if I were painting with that, I would be really disappointed. So that I tried to get as much of it out. I mean, the paper in this instance isn't the precious thing, it's the paint. It's a little bit disappointing to see so much waste. And that was a new tube, by the way. Like, I think I swatched it and that's all I'd had a chance to do with it. So what's important about this isn't necessarily that I'm sending paints that Kabocha may not have. It's more that I am curating a collection of paints inspired by their character. So it's the time that I'm putting in to creating a custom palette that's really the gift more so than the paints. So this is great if you have a friend who has original characters, they have OCs, you have a friend with a comic and they also enjoy traditional media because I mean, which one of us doesn't love when someone else cares about our characters? Or perhaps you have a friend and you know they love a specific palette of colors or they've been really eyeing a specific palette. And you don't have to do this for an entire month. You could do it for a week or you could set up each week as one color challenge. So there's a variety of ways this can be done.
right, so now we need to allow these to dry out thoroughly before we can start putting them on our calendar. All right, guys, so it has been several days. Our watercolor sample dots have dried. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them out. So I have two sets going on right now. I'm gonna separate the two. And then I'm going to cut the individual samples and affix them using tape to the calendars we printed out. So I wanna make sure I trim my samples so that they will actually fit within these squares. So for our last two steps, you may want to attach this to some heavier paper or some cardstock, and you're gonna want to use some page protectors for when you, when you are sending this on its way, just to make sure the paint chips don't get knocked off. And these aren't even particularly fancy page protectors, they're just sheet protectors. All right, art nerds, that's just about it. I've shown you guys how to make 
three very affordable sort of watercolor filler gifts or even watercolor gifts. We've done custom assembled palettes and these are created using the homemade magnetic palettes. So these can be reconfigured or if the person you're gifting to wants to add the watercolor to their main set, it's easy to do that. We've also created a listing to go with this palette so they can find everything very easily. We created some really cute little dot card ornaments or present tags if you're doing kind of a themed present or maybe if you're doing a gift exchange where everybody has to get something or if you're decorating a tree for like your watercolor club, your watercolor association's annual meeting. These could be really cute. We also have these mini paint sets that I made in a separate video and you guys should check these out. These are so cute. These would be great as little stocking stuffers, maybe good for younger artists who are not yet sure if they want to watercolor or just a great way to make a teensy tiny travel set. And then finally, we made monthly or a month color a day challenge cards. This one is for a particular character and it's sort of themed around her. And this one is themed around the artist's color taste. All of these are fairly easy to make. They just require a lot of time to allow the dots to dry. So I would recommend starting on these projects a couple weeks. So I guess like today, I would recommend starting on these projects a couple weeks early, but they're a great way to share your watercolor collection with someone else who might enjoy it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful, useful, and inspiring. If you're looking for more watercolor gifts, make sure you check out my watercolor gift guide. Bye guys.